Uh, I'm intrigued by The Grey Man because at the top of the programme you were talking about it in terms of the incredible budget that yeah. Netflix have thrown at it. So tell us more. So it's directed by the Russo brothers who famously made Avengers Infinity War um, in Endgame, but then followed that up with an adaptation of Nico Walker's novel Cherry starring Tom Holland, which I reviewed uh, with you previously. Yes. So this is a kind of... Uh, uh, Bond inflected, I suppose, espionage thriller starring Ryan Gosling, Anna de Armas, who of course was in No Time to Die in absolute, you know, butt kicking form, and Chris Evans. Uh, so you can see all the connections. Based on a novel by Mark Greening, which I haven't read. Are you familiar with the Great no, Man not, novels? No. Okay, fine. So it opens in cinemas today at Netflix on the 22nd. It is reportedly their most expensive production in the in the region of $200 million and designed, I presume, as a franchise starter. So Ryan Gosling is a convict to whom Billy Bob Thornton offers sentence commutation for work for the CIA. He says, you will be part of an elite unit. You'll exist in the grey. Grey man. Okay. You'll exist okay. in the grey. Yep. And you will be indefinitely useful, which means we'll get you out of prison, but you'll work for us forevermore. 18 years later, he's doing just that. He's called Six. He's now called Six. Okay. In fact, there's a gag when somebody says, that's a weird name. He says, well, 007 was taken. Very good. There we go. Um, he's, on mission, he's on a mission to kill bad guys. And Eleven, of course, is busy in Stranger Things. So. Very good. Um, so, or L. Uh, yeah. And so he, the, the mission that we meet him on early on turns out to be not what he thinks it should be. He is being conspired against by his superiors and now finds himself being hunted by freelance maniac Lloyd, who is played by Chris Evans, sporting no socks, Nazi hair and a very bad moustache. Here's a clip. Hey, sunshine. Mm. You must be Lloyd. What gave it away? The white pants, the trash dash. It just, it leans Lloyd. Where's the drive? I got it here somewhere. It's just hard to see. Is that, <clears throat> is that in? Again, a very visual clip. Yes, you ought, you ought to explain what, what happened there. So what happens in he says, is this it? He pulls the pin out of a grenade, he drops the grenade, and then the whole room blows up. And I have to say, that happens quite a lot uh, in the film. The film narratively has an internal flashback structure that kind of resembles a, a rather more head-banging version of Pulp Fiction. So everyone talks like a hard-boiled Tarantino character, including the young girl who... there's a, Remember that thing in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in which there's a young child who talks like Tarantino? Um, it's full of kind of cod hard-boiled slang. You've got to get loud means you've know, got to do the job. If you like breathing, you might want to fix this. Hit that meatball like a train. And my favourite, you want to make an omelette, you've got to kill some people. They're, okay, that's not quite the version that my mum told me. <laughs> exactly. They're also kind of, you know, knowing Sarky references to Schopenhauer. And Gosling's character chews gum or chews a toothpick because this is, you know, it's the kind of hard-boiled cliche stuff. Visually... It reminded me, and I, not necessarily in a good way, of Michael Bay's Ambulance. You remember all the drone stuff in Ambulance? Yeah, like, it didn't matter what, if, if two people were standing next to each other having a conversation in the street. The yeah. We could have a drone camera in this studio. That'd be quite good. It would just flip around. Yeah, but you were saying that you, whenever you see anyone doing that, you see a camera spin around somebody. All you can think is, it's amazing that you're concentrating while that camera is going. Absolutely, which has happened in movies since forever, but I yeah. find it quite distracting, yes. There are some big set pieces in including a big flight, a big fight on both in and out of a plane, and then a chase sequence on car, on foot, on tram, in which a major city is smashed to pieces in a kind of Team America way. I mean, I have to say that those scenes are spectacular, if CGI heavy. Since Top Gun Maverick, Top Gun Maverick... I think we've all become more conscious of, of, of CG because there is the thing about the physicality. Mm -hmm. Whatever else you think of Top Gun Maverick, the physicality is very, very physical. There's also, I mean, this is kind of an example of how cranked up to 11 it is. Early on, there's a fight sequence with two people beating seven bells out of each other in the middle of a fireworks display. The, you remember that scene from Mary Poppins? Step in time, it's all me pals! And then all the fireworks start going off. Well, imagine that, but done with people bashing each other's okay. faces in. I like the sound of this. Um, Anna de Armas is terrific and is really turning into kind of the action hero, you know, the high watermark. Um, there is 
there are a couple of fight scenes, and Midoriya uh, is involved in a fight sequence that actually looks like a fight sequence, which is kind of quite nice when it gets physical. You go, okay, fine, finally that. Most of the time, however, it's bigger guns, bigger bombs, big explosions, really, really big, dumb fun, too loud, too long, no substance whatsoever. It's like somebody rabbit punching your brain for the best part of two hours. And there's a certain enjoyability in that. I mean, if what you want to do is lit- literally, you know, that old phrase about leave your brain at the door, well, bring your brain with you and let it get kicked around for however many rounds it is. It's, it is it is empty spectacle par excellence. And I could have done with a lot less CG um, because I'm I'm just not crazy about it. And I, I did want the camera to just stand still for a couple of minutes. But it does what it says on the tin. It is, a, it, is, it is a movie in which everything is cranked up to 11 and then some. And every single moment, the guns, the explosions, the fights, the everything just gets bigger. Their, their motto appears to be, when in doubt, turn it up. Maybe I should wait for it to appear on Netflix it, rather than go to the movies. But. I mean, I saw it in a screening. I saw it in Dolby, oh, okay. you know, which has got a big sound system. And I, I was thinking, oh, it's funny. I was thinking of this as a Netflix production, but actually, to really enjoy it, you need to see it with everything. So, the but then I'm sure that you've got a good sound okay. system at home. So, 